Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-34. Last time, we discovered the power of the crystal wand found by the party in the giant's belongings. The storm it created allowed the party to separate themselves from their giant pursuers and move ahead to warn the Denali people of the invasion. We rejoin the group a few days later as they enter the inland sea near the harbor with a giant ship in fresh pursuit. Yesterday's storm didn't discourage them. I think they're gaining on us, yelled out Grish over the crashing waves. I see oars. They will overtake us this time. What about the wand? chimed in Phidias to a chorus of no's. The dejected gnome moved to the railing where he began to take inventory of his weapons. The rest of the party did the same as the captain rushed along the deck barking out orders. A loud splash was heard as a projectile nearly struck the back of the flying porpoise. We're almost there, yelled out Yolanda. I can see the city in the distance and ships from the harbor. The group looked ahead of their vessel to see several smaller ships speeding their way to assist the fight. Behind them, the giant vessel unfurled their flag of a large hand holding a small head. The smaller and faster Denali vessels quickly caught up to the flying porpoise, and one positioned themselves in between the two. As the party cheered, a volley of arrows were launched from the smaller Denali frigate that struck the sails of the giant vessel. Much to the dismay of all, the craft was unable to move out of the way as the giant ship blocked out its wind. The larger vessel rammed the smaller boat and tore it into two pieces, which sunk almost immediately, pitching sailors into the churning waves and under the giant's vessel. As the giant ship continued pursuit, the party watched as sailors were being struck with oars and sank below the waves, dead. Sir Omel yelled out to the group, requesting they prepare themselves for a fight. One by one, the group formed a line at the back of the ship, preparing to be boarded. The knight looked around, quickly getting a head count. Harris! Where is Harris? he yelled. The others looked around, but the mage was nowhere to be found. Stance spoke up. He was very sick from the waves yesterday. Perhaps he is still below. Shall I go get him? Omel looked to Grish, who grimly shook his head. Omel thought for a moment and began to speak. Stance, go and... But his sentence was cut off as the ship lurched to a stop. Splinters flew up from the back of the vessel, cutting into the group's skin. Looking overboard, they saw the cause of the disruption in the form of a long ballista bowl with a rope attached to it, stuck in the back of their ship. Looking behind them, the group observed several giants pulling on the rope and dragging the flying porpoise backwards. Cut it! Cut it! yelled out Omel as he brandished his weapon and attempted to reach the rope. He and Yolanda tried hard to sever the line, but to no avail as it was beyond their reach. They mean to board us, yelled out Stance as several giants prepared a large gangplank on their ship. Several smaller vessels again peppered the giant's vessel with arrows, but it was unable to slow the attack. A large hill giant leapt from his vessel onto the smaller Denali ship, causing it to jerk violently, sending several sailors over the side. Combat ensued, but the party could not help as they were about to be boarded. Another missile weapon was launched by the giants and struck another ship just below the waterline, pitching sailors into the water just as the makeshift walkway slammed into the back of the flying porpoise, knocking the group to the deck. Struggling to get to their feet, they observed a stone giant gingerly crossing the distance to gain position on their ship. The enormous creature stepped back onto the deck, causing the vessel to tip backwards. 
Raising its club to smash Omel the Knight, he got to his knees and raised his shield to deflect the blow that never came. A loud twang filled the air and the group watched as a ballista bolt struck the creature in the face, sending him over the side. The group turned quickly to see the captain and his crew shaking their fists in victory. Take that, you bastard, yelled the captain, but his smile evaporated as a stone the size of his head smashed into his chest, knocking him into the rigging. The battle raged as the giant vessel was surrounded on all sides by smaller and ineffective boats. With the flying porpoise and the giant's ship now touching, a pair of hill giants jumped to the rear of the deck, nearly capsizing the party's craft. Melee ensued as several sailors were smashed off the deck with well-placed club strikes. Omel, Stance, and Phidias took on one interloper, while Grish and Yolanda took on the other. A thunderstorm took hold over the harbor, and torrents of rain poured forth, making the deck slippery. Several missed strikes were thrown, along with several well-placed hits. Both Phidias and Yolanda took glancing club blows, causing significant injury to them, while Omel's armor was dented from multiple hits. One of the giants smashed Grish into the face, sending him skidding towards the center of the deck, leaving Yolanda on her own. Omel sent their hill giant over the side as Stance tripped the large humanoid. The creature fell into the wreckage of yet another frigate, and they turned their attention towards the other giant pirate, but they were too late. The group looked up in shock as the hill giant sized up Yolanda and had her cornered. As the naughty club came down to smash the fighter, she held up her short swords, trying to defend and deflect the blow. Opening her eyes, she observed a large metal hand whoosh past her face, sending the gritty giant into the water. The wind from the large hand knocked her down to her knees, and she looked up to see the iron golem from the harbor wading through chest-deep water, coming to her rescue. As the rain partially blinded her, she observed the familiar figure of Harris hanging onto the golem's ear, giving it directions and pointing out opponents. Cheers rang up from the sailors floating in the bay and those who were still afloat on their own vessels. Yells rang out from the giant vessel and the ship began to turn to one side. The golem reached out and shoved the aggressor's vessel, causing it to lurch violently, sending giants scattering across the deck. It turned toward the inlet opening, and the golem, still walking out into the bay, found Harris completely drenched as the waters rose until he disappeared below the waves. The giant's vessel lurched forward yet again as if being pushed and began its escape towards the opening. The storms began to subside and glints of sunlight sparkled on the waters of the bay. Grish and Yolanda limped over to the damaged rear railing of the boat and looked for Harris. As the others joined them, the waters receded and a choking figure rose standing on the head of the titanic iron golem. The creation moved through the waters easily and as the giant vessel retreated, the golem deposited Harris the mage onto the deck of the flying porpoise before moving off to its island location. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.